Hello. Uh, in this video, I'll be showing you how to do some basic instrumental variable stuff in R. Uh, now, there's a lot of different packages that you can use in R for doing instrumental variables. Uh, sort of the classic one is the IV reg function in the AER package. Uh, another good one is the FELM function uh, in the LFE package. Uh, but the one we're going to be using today is the IV underscore robust function in the estimator package. Uh, I think the syntax for it is a little bit easier, uh, unlike FELM. It's a little bit easier than FELM. Uh, and yet it has a couple more features like robust or clustered standard errors and fixed effects uh, that the IV reg function does not have, or at least not easily. Uh, so uh, I've got here some, some fabricated data, some, uh, some uh, fake data that I created where we, we have 100 observations. We have an, a, a y variable, uh, we have an x variable uh, that is based on some instruments, and so we have, here's our endogenous variable, uh, we have our uh, a control variable, we have two instruments here, z1 and z2, and we're going to be running some instrumental variables estimates on this. So first let's do it by hand uh, really quick, uh, so you can see how to do that. So uh, we can do our first stage and our second stage. So we can do uh, first stage, which is going to be lm, it's going to be x regressed on uh, z1 and z2. Let's just do Z1 to start. Uh, X2 is our control, and that's data equals dat. That's our first stage. There we go, X1. Uh, and uh, so first of all, if you're going to look at your first stage, which is a good idea in general, you do need to do it by hand in this way. Uh, and so to do that, you just take your, your uh, treatment variable, your endogenous variable, and you regress that on your, whatever instruments you have, and then also your controls. Uh, so we can look at our first stage variable. So let's just look summary. First stage, we could be using export sums, but here let's just use summary, uh, so we can see what the uh, coefficients there are. Want to make sure that you know we have the effect in the right direction that we expect, and that it's significant, all that good stuff. Uh, so then, uh, if we want to do it by hand, first we can predict the values from our first stage. So this is our predict our uh, x1 hat. That's going to be uh, the predicted values of our first stage. And then we can use that in our second stage. So our second stage raw, our OLS, let's say, would be LM of Y regressed on X1 plus X2, data equals dat. Uh, so that's just OLS regularly without instrumental variables. Uh, to do our two-stage least squares, we would do the exact same thing, except we replace X1 with X1 hat right there. Uh, and so then we can look at like that. Uh, now, of course, the, the standard errors on this method are not correct. We need to do an adjustment for the standard errors because our x1 hat was estimated. We didn't do that here. But that's just how we can do two stage least squares by hand in R. Pretty easy. We didn't use the package yet. But now let's use the package. Uh, let's actually do IV robust properly. This will also uh, Im implement uh, robust standard errors, which is a, usually a good thing as well. You don't want robust standard errors. Uh, you can set the standard errors to be classic, uh, but uh, often you want that anyway. So. Let's do IV. So our IV, uh, we're going to use IV underscore robust. And we're going to, first of all, we're going to specify the second stage regression as we typically would in OLS. So we're going to take this exact same regression that we have here. Just paste that right in. Then we're going to use a little pipe here, uh, the, the straight up and down line that's usually above your enter key, by the way. Uh, this is a standard uh, formula approach for pretty much all of the packages that I mentioned that use IV, use something like this. So then we're going to do the first stage, and we're going to do the entirety of the first stage. We take the first stage here, Z1 plus X2, but just the ex explanatory variables, pop that in there. Then we have data equals dat, run that, and then we can look at... IV results right there. So our coefficient on x1, negative 0.384, which should be the exact same to what we got when we did it by hand, at least for the coefficient, if not the standard errors, 384. There we go. Okay, so that's how we can do it with IV robust, straightforward, easy to do. Uh, what else can we do here? Uh, so for, one, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, let's just put in a second uh, instrument here. Let's put in our second instrument, Z2. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a second. By the way, when you add a second instrument, that's totally fine. You can do that. A couple of reasons why you might add a second instrument. One, it improves your uh, explanatory power in the first stage, which is nice. Uh, second, it does change what you're estimating. Uh, so we get a local average treatment effect with instrumental variables. Uh, so the stronger you are affected by the instrument, the more strongly your treatment effect is weighted. With two instruments, we're getting a weighted average of those local average treatment effects. And so if you want to sort of get a mix of the local average treatment effect from this variable and from this variable, multiple instruments. Get a, it smooths out in that way. We're also going to do diagnostics 
equals true. And what that's going to do is that's going to add some things to the IV2 uh, object. They're going to do some diagnostics on for us from the first stage. Uh, so what diagnostics do we mean exactly? So if one thing, one common thing that you might want uh, from instrumental variables is to see the F statistic on the joint test of all the instruments in the first stage. This is a common way of checking for weak instruments. So we do IV2 and then we look dollar sign and we can start looking for things that are in there and we see three diagnostics in here. Uh, one is the first stage F statistic, which if we do that, uh, we get a p-value of uh, a very, very small p-value. So this is 2.38 times 10 to the negative 34, very, very tiny. This is an F statistic of 192. Uh, if you want that to look a little bit nicer, you can use the scales package. Scales uh, number, and let's pop that in there. Let's say our accuracy is to the, to the, to, to the hundredths place. So now we can read it a little more easy. We have an F statistic of 193. That's pretty good, uh, I would say. All right, so what other diagnostics might we see in here? So another one that we will see is, and this is the reason why I did two instruments, uh, is the uh, over-identification test. So why would we do not, uh, what would an over-identification test do? So if we have multiple instruments, if we assume that at least one of them is correct, we can sort of check the other one against it, right? So if the two different instruments give very different results, uh, either one of them is endogenous and shouldn't be an instrument, or potentially they're just picking up different local average treatment effects. But if we assume that that's, that second one's not the case, then if we get very different results using different instruments, that probably tells us that at least one of our instruments is endogenous. So we sort of want them to give the same result no matter which one we do. So the over-identification test runs the model separately using only one of the instruments at a time and sees if the results differ across the different instruments. Uh, so if we look at that, uh, here we get a very large p-value, so we can't reject that the two different effects are the same depend no, no matter which instrument you use. So we, we are not seeing evidence of different coefficients. So that tells us that if at least one of our instruments is uh, valid, then we can probably assume the other one is also valid, which is good. It means we can include both of them. Uh, now, granted, if we had failed this, if we had rejected that they were the same, we wouldn't know which of our instruments was endogenous. Uh, we would just have a pretty good idea that at least one of them is. Uh, the last thing that is in that diagnostics there is uh, the endogeneity test, but I'll be honest, I've never once cared what the result of that test is. I don't believe it, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, so that's it. That's how you can do instrumental variables, uh, at least at a basic level, in R. Thank you.